Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and welcome to the Box Hard Podcast. Hello, everyone. This is Mikey Garcia. It's the monster from the swamp, Regis Ruru Program. Hey, what's up? This is King Carlos Molina, former IBF world champ. This is Michael, the bounty hunter, 2012 Olympian and your people's champ. This is Charlie Edwards, flyweight champion of the world. This is Fast Eddie Chambers, and you're listening to the Box Hard Podcast with my main man, Joey Kosmo. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 413 of the Box Hard Podcast. I'm your host Joey Coastman. I'm joined this week by my good friend, my good man, the former WBO Super Featherweight World Champion. It is of course Mr. Jamel Herring. Jamel man, how you doing this week man? Thanks for filling in. Hey, what's going on? What's going on, bro? Good to speak with you again, man. What's going on? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm doing really well. Good to have you back on. Our listeners haven't haven't heard your voice on this podcast at least for about two years since pre-retirement. It's, How's it's, things been? It's been that long. Yeah, man, two years. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea it's been that long. Yeah, man. So how's catch up. You gotta catch up, bro. There we go. So how's things with you? Obviously, I'm sure that we'll do a, we'll do a more kind of formal interview when you have something you know announced and it, and all the rest of it. But just briefly, in a nutshell, Jamel, how's things going with you at the moment? You're coming out of retirement, is the news. Everything's been going good. I can't complain. I've just been staying busy. Um, obviously, I'm about to get back into in the mix of things with my own career. But you know, I've been busy managing, um, commentating as you as you see and. Just stay, just staying active in the boxing world. Excellent, man. Well, yeah, like I say, it's been fantastic hearing your voice most weeks on the commentary, especially here in the UK on Sky Sports. Um, okay, right. Thank you. Well, there we go. Let's dive straight into this review part of the show. We're going to start here last Friday, September 8th at the Lac Lemi Casino in Quebec, Canada. Two fights to mention over here. Steve Claggett with a win now, 36-7 and seven with two draws. A unanimous decision over 10 against Carlos Sanchez. I expected that one to probably end within the distance, but yeah, I got that one wrong. Unanimous over 10. Carlos <laughs> Sanchez <laughs> now 24-2. and two. That one was for the NABF. Super lightweight title. The main event, Christian and Billy now 25 and 0, a KO in round four against Demond Nicholson, who's now 26 and 6 with a draw. Demond Nicholson, obviously, um, massively an you know an opponent really. His kind of claim to fame in recent years, like I say, was taking Edgar Belang at a distance um, when he put yeah. together 16 first round knockouts. But yeah, showed up here in Canada and he got he got, you know, really beaten up and stopped, like I say. I think it was incredibly impressive from Christian in Billy. And off the back of that, Damon Nicholson has decided he's gonna hang the gloves up. So all the best to him in retirement. That one was for the WBC Continental America's super middleweight title. Uh, the final fight to mention from last week as well, just to briefly mention, uh, this one went down at the Sports Event Center in Rock Hill, South Carolina, USA. Uh, we had him on a couple weeks ago, the undefeated cruiserweight Craig Parker. He's now 15-0, and all 15 by a KO. A knockout for him in round one against Antonio Brown, who's now 8-4. and four. So Craig Parker, like I say, uh, I think that's the 13th first round knockout out of his 15 knockouts the other two came in round two so all the best to craig parker moving forward that though brings the review part to a close that's the end of part one it's now time for me to welcome this week's special guest ladies and gentlemen please welcome the undefeated lightweight knockout artist he's from maidstone his hands are made of stone it is of course mr sam Noak. sam welcome back on the show my man Oh, thanks for having me. I love hearing that every time you say that. I was just thinking when you were introducing it, I think, oh, I wonder if you can remember the saying. It's brilliant, that is. Can never forget it, my man. So, Sam, we last spoke back in April. It was it was uh, fight week for the Carfit Kumar fight. I remember asking you, you've gotten to 10-0 and with 10 KOs. That was kind of the target. Is the aim to extend it to 11-0 and with 11 KOs? And I think you nonchalantly said it would be nice 
Um, but I wasn't sure if you were definitely going to go for it. It took about two seconds for me to realise that you were going to go for it. You blitzed the Indian within two rounds. Just talk to me briefly about the fight, Sam. Yeah, so always going into a fight. Like, I never like to overlook anybody, really. Like, I've never been, ever, 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 always been like that since an amateur. I always think, oh, they must know something. That's why they've taken a fight. But then as soon as I got in that fight and I see how he reacted when I hit him, I just thought, right, you know what, I'm going to stick on him because I just sort of went for it straight away. Because that was like, when I got back to the corner after the first round, he was like, oh, calm down. And obviously I just replied, like, I knew he didn't have much more of it in him. No, I think like he knew he bit off a bit more than he could chew, and then obviously I went for it, and then he stopped him in the second. He was lucky. To be fair, he was tough. I'll give it like as in like well, straight tough. He was gutsy to come out for the second round, really, because he had it rough at the end of that first. Um, yeah, I was glad I got that done early on, to be honest. Yeah, actually, I was going to say the exact same thing. I think he could have he could have um, found a way out in round one. Um, the week after that fight, I remember, again, we spoke about it last time we had you on, but the week after your fight, we were going to be seeing Gavin Gwynn uh, with Craig Woodruff. Um, Gavin Gwynn managed to stop him for the British title. I don't think many people expected him to get the stoppage, to be honest. What did you make of it? And is that still the route that you want to go down, British title? Yeah, I think he, uh, he put on a good performance. Then I think, obviously, after getting that draw, he might have just had a bad night with uh, Woodruff. And I think, obviously, he was coming back with vengeance. I think it was a big fight, a big show. I mean, Cardiff, wasn't it, on the um, Joe Cordino on the card. So I think he, he shined really well with that. And uh, fair play to him. But, um, I mean, listen, I think every British fighter, fighter wants that Lonsdale belt. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think it's definitely something I would want. I mean... Who knows what Mr. Gwynn will be doing eventually in the next coming months, I mean, so... But I think I've got a couple more fights back into this year and I'll definitely something that I want to go for next year. Definitely. And also, since we last spoke, Dennis McCann had that fight with Baluta. Um, I wanted to get your take on it. I wanted I wanted to also ask how uh, McCann's cut was healing up as well. Yeah, I think... I mean, Dennis showed true courage, you know. I mean, like, listen, Baluta... I think he asked for that fight, Dennis, so it wasn't, like, given to him, like, that's the fight he wanted. So, and then, obviously, like, this and Baluta's been in there with some good names, got a split decision, loss against Conlon, who's an unbelievable fight. And I think, I think Dennis has definitely got the beat, beating of him if they have a rematch. I think, obviously, he's got to maybe do a couple of things differently. I think, and also, to be fair, that York or we was there, we were in there, yeah, and, uh, I was only in shorts and a t-shirt, and I tell you what, I was dripping with sweat. So I can only imagine what it'd be like boxing in that ring. I imagine it'd be like a solder in there. <laughs> yeah, um, if we see the rematch, um, yeah, I think yeah, obviously McCann needs to not get drawn in as much as I think he did. But yeah, yeah. really, really good fight. Hopefully, we do see it again. And yeah, you're boxing in ten days' time at the Wembley Arena as part of that Zhang Joyce two undercard. I believe just you and Moses Itauma are the two guys that would have boxed on both the undercards. Um, you'll be boxing Spain's Carlos Perez, nineteen and seven with two draws. Only been stopped one time though. What do you know about? your opponent and how do you how do you see the fight going Sam? Uh so I've watched him against Corey Gibbs and he, he, he don't I think he's better than his record suggests, you know what I'm saying? Like he's quite clever. He's been in there, been about I think I'm gonna have to take him into deep waters, I think, to maybe get the late stoppage. No, I'm not overlooking him honestly we only he only we only got an opponent confirmed what, two, three weeks ago if that so I think, as I said, I never overlook anyone. I mean, I think Corey Gibbs maybe made him look good because obviously Corey Gibbs is a back on fighter. But I think Carl, Carlos Perez is a little bit of a negative, negative fighter as well. Like he's, he's always on the back foot. So uh, hopefully, that, hopefully I'm wrong and he comes forward. But <laughs> I'll be at it. Yeah, I was going to say, obviously, he's been in there with Corey Gibbs. He's been in there with John O'Carroll. Is it important to you to win more impressively than those guys? I know you mentioned that Gibbs is a totally different style to you, but is that in the back of your mind? They they obviously didn't get him out of there. I mean, realistically, they're two good names, isn't it? I mean, for me, I want to, I want to stop it just because, you know, I'll, I've come this far now with 11 11. I would like the sound of 12 and 12. Do you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, obviously, the winning, the winning is the main thing, but. I would be gutted if it went distance, you know what I'm saying? I would be gutted. When it eventually happens the first time, I am going to be a little bit sad. 
Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Wow, number one priority. <laughs> Um, I was going to ask as well um, if you had like a new target of knockouts that you want to get to. If it was going to be fifteen and fifteen, I mean, what what you thinking? <laughs> well, fifteen and fifteen is the next sort of benchmark, I think. Really, that's what I'd like. But I'm not I'm not stating it like I did that ten and ten because obviously fifteen and fifteen is a big ask. But then if I get to that, it's going to be twenty and twenty, isn't it? <laughs> but honestly, like, honestly, I'm going to I'm putting the work in. That's what I want. I'm fit enough. I mean, this is, I thought it was a 12 round because obviously I was meant to be defending the Commonwealth as well, but couldn't manage to get an opponent in the Commonwealth. So it's only a 10, which I don't think is really a benefit because obviously I'd rather have another two rounds, but sort of um, as a safety net, but I can get the job done in 10. I'm pretty sure about that. If he's still there in the 10th round, I'm going to be going out for leather. I guarantee you. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say um, 15 and 15 and 0, 15 KOs. It's within reach, and um, yeah, 2020 vision has a whole new meaning that, that I'm speaking with you. Um, am I right in saying as well, Sam, that Sean is on the undercard as well? Yeah, Sean is on there. He's on there as well. First time we boxed for about a decade, I think, on the same card. Yeah, I was gonna say it goes back to the amateurs, that. Yeah, yeah, it must have been yeah about 2013, the same card, yeah. Well, wow. and are you looking forward to that factor, or is there a bit of nerves there? Uh, I mean, listen, I'm I'm quite good at shutting them sort of personal feelings off. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, he'll be on earlier than I will, so it's more of a I, can't, I ain't going to be able to come out and see him. Do you know what I mean? I'm not. Well, I'll watch it back on the telly, but like, obviously, like I love my brother to death. But you know, like you got to focus on what you're there for. You know what I mean? So obviously, I'll just be waiting intently to hear about the result in the um, change room, but I have no doubt in my mind that he'll probably get a better knockout than I do. <laughs> I'm sure there'll yeah, be... Lastly, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be a bit of a competition on that. Um, and I, I wanted to... He, he don't stop going on about it, mate. He's done the quicker one out of the two of us and probably the more devastating one, but I'll give it. He's working hard. He's doing well. I'll let him have it. And I was going to ask as well, how's he getting on? Because I'm sure this will be his first fight as a married man. Am I right in saying yeah, first wife as a married man. I think he's taken a married wife, uh, married life very well because uh, he's securely under that thumb and he lived by the happy wife, happy life sort of saying. So um, he can take to it very well to do his job, mate. But um, yeah, I think he's been looking good in the gym. I mean, he's been doing some rounds with Pierce. I mean, he's a solid fighter. I see him do a few rounds Monday and he looked, he looked really good. So I'm excited to see how he looks. Fingers crossed he gets on the telly, but where he's a late replacement, he might not. But hopefully, it'd be nice for us both to be televised on the same event. Yeah, no, that'd be absolutely fantastic. And yeah, Pierce in a good fight as well. Kane Gardner. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask yeah, as well. I wanted to ask as well. Sky Nicholson's out in Mexico on Friday. Um, how's she been looking? I haven't heard from Sky for a little while, Sam. Yeah, Sky's she's an unbelievable boxer. She's you know, we've been playing a sport called paddle tennis, yeah? Have you heard of it? I've never heard of that. No, it's like tennis and squash combined, yeah? And I don't know someone who can have such good hand-eye coordination in the ring, such brilliant football, and it'd be so bad at a racket sport, honestly. So it's, it blows my mind. But she's been looking sharp. I know she went over to Denmark, had some unbelievable sparring over there, she said. And she's done some really good competitive rounds. So I have no doubt in my mind that she's going to have a shout-out point victory win and just finally my last real question um, there's a chance that we could both look absolutely clueless again because I remember asking you um, about the first Joe Joyce Zhang fight we were both in agreement Joyce you know will, will be comfortably the winner I was under the impression that Zhang was literally tailor made for Joyce however Zhang pulled off the upset how do you see the rematch going and are you surprised to see Big Joe as the betting underdog uh, I'm not surprised to see him as the underdog because I think mean, Zhang did look very good last time out. I mean, part of me does believe, like, feel like how much will Joyce change in them six months? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, but I do think you can never rule out the juggernaut, mate. The geese is an absolute machine. I mean, even then, it were not hurt. He just had a, his eye closed up. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think... And Zang does tire, so I don't know, it's, it's not quite. 
I've got to be back in my mouth, Joyce. So he's quite lovely. They're both lovely men, but I mean, obviously, you're back to prison, you know, so hopefully Joe Joyce does the job. I hope so. And, um, yeah, I just couldn't understand his tactics. It seemed to me, anyway, that he was standing right in front of Zhang and he was unloading combinations exclusively to the body leaving himself open upstairs for the straight one-two, straight down the pipe every single time to the point where his eye just blew up. And that was it for me. Just couldn't stand in front of him and unload a six-punch combination to the body and not bring the hands up again to cut, to, you know, to, to um, block anything coming back. That's what it seemed yeah. like to me. I mean, everyone has an off night, don't they? I mean, you're allowed, I suppose. Some people do, it could have just been an off night for Joe Joyce and you he could come back even better. Hopefully but he does. I don't think it's going to be an easy night. I don't think it'll be an easy night either. Whatever happens, it'll be a very good point to watch. Yeah, three to one for the Joyce knockout looks unbelievable. But anyways, um, just before we let you go, Sam, if you've got any closing words just to the listeners, like I say, um, we have you on quite frequently, pretty much once every fight, and um, you're a fan favourite, and you're certainly one of the one of one of my favourite people to introduce, at least. <laughs> Oh, dear, mate. Cheers, mate. Well, yeah, just uh, thanks for having me on the show. Hope you enjoy listening again and uh, tune in on the 21st. Hopefully you make it 12 and 12. 12 and 12 is the mission. Listen, Sam, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for your time. Best of luck for the 23rd, and we'll speak sometime afterwards. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. Okay, now it's time for part two on this week's show. This part, of course, the news part of the show. Going to start with this piece here. Two fights actually have been announced under the Matrim stable. Uh, the first of the two to go down October the 28th in Cancun. Over here, we're going to see Oshiki Foster making his, I believe, first defense of that WBC World Super Featherweight title against Eduardo Rocky Hernandez. Again, Cancun, Mexico, October 28th, live on the zone. Um, that's the first of two. The other one, of course, Joe Caldina defending his IBF crown. Um, Monte Carlo in, in, in Monaco, obviously. Um, yeah, Matchroom have been there a few times in the past. They always put on quite a random kind of card. And yeah, Joe Caldina makes that defense against Edward Vasquez. Um, yeah, so a defense there of the IBF Super Featherweight World Titles. I didn't actually do this intentionally, Jamel, but the two pieces of news both include guys defending world titles in that that uh, weight division, of course, that you belong to. Um, any yeah. thoughts on either of those fights, just briefly before we move on, Jamal? I mean, I mean, for me, I wish them the best to both for luck. Of, of course, I would like to share the ring with, the, with either one of those guys in the future. You know, just saying, especially, you know, especially Joe Cardina. I, I've been telling you for years personally that you know I wanted to travel back overseas to fight anyway. So once I handle business in November, which we'll get to. You know, I would love it. I would love to come back overseas and um, you know, face off against you know my good friend Joe Cardina, or other or like I said, any more anybody else with the world title. I know my friend Lamont Roach also expressed that he wants to get his get back. So if he beats Hector Garcia, we could do that rematch as well. There we go. Lots of fights on the table for Jamel. Uh, moving now, though, to the preview part of the show. This part is the, the part where we, of course, go over the fights that's coming up this weekend. We're going to start here in, uh, in, in Mexico. This one goes down on Friday um, at the Auditorio Municipal Fausto Gutierrez Moreno. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where that is, but it's somewhere in Tijuana. Um yeah, it's going to be live on the zone. Couple fights to mention on the card. Two female fights, actually. We're going to see uh, the UK. I was going to say the UK's. I, I don't want to claim her. Actually, she's from Australia. <laughs> that would annoy a lot of people. But she trains in the UK. Sky Nicholson, friend of the show, seven and zero. It's for the WBC interim featherweight world titles. Um, or fe featherweight world title. It's over ten two minute rounds. She gets in with Mexico's Sabrina Maribel Perez. Um, obviously, all the best to, to Sky Nicholson, who has been really impressive as a pro. Still yet to find knockout number one. Uh, like I say, she gets in with a Mexican lady here. Um, sorry, I've been saying that wrong. Actually, an Argentinian lady. I apologize. Um, who actually got stopped three fights back in the first round to a lady who was 
three and two. I don't think that's a good look, but after that, she's come back with two wins. She's been quite inactive, though. Um, I actually think... I mean, I'm, I'm definitely back in Sky Nicholson to do the business here, but I think a, a stoppage at 10 to 1 is quite interesting odds. That's just 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 worth mentioning there. And the main event over here as well, we're going to see Erica Cruz Hernandez, 15 and 2, um, coming off that loss last time out earlier this year to Amanda Serrano in what was a bit of a bloodbath, actually. I don't think we saw the best of Erica Cruz in that fight, but she's back here. Right. She gets in with Melissa Odessa Parker, um, who is uh, who, who's been on the show before, actually. But she's coming off a very, very controversial majority decision loss back in July, and it was highly disputed. A lot of people felt that she got robbed. I think it was on a Luda Bella show, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, should be a good fight here. Um, I think it will go to distance. Both ladies extremely tough. But I wouldn't be surprised if an upset were to occur. I'm, of course, pulling for Melissa Parker. Been on the show, friend of the show. Um, moving now to this yeah. one. Sorry, go on. Quick story, Quick story with um, Melissa. Melissa's actually a Marine Corps. Um, she's a teammate. She's a teammate of mine. Um, we, 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 we trained together probably about 13 years ago. 13 years ago now. I know Melissa since yeah, 09, I believe. 09, um, 2010. But with that being said, um, hopefully Melissa comes out of this fight unscathed because Lou Lou has Lou has also set up for November where she'll be facing off my fighter that I'm managing, Makaya Krep. So obviously we have interest in that fight um this weekend to see how Melissa does. But again, I just want to wish, wish her the best of luck and I hope that she comes out unscathed and um and she could come back in November to face off against Makaya Krebs. There we go. It's good to get that little update. All the best there too. Melissa, um, I didn't know that you knew her, but that is pretty cool. She's, uh, I remember kind of interviewing her, and she's quite a tough lady. Like, I was actually a little bit nervous interviewing her. But anyways, all the best to her. Um, yeah, now moving to this one. Of course, on Friday, Jamel, we're going to hear your fantastic voice over Sky Sports, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, the American Bank Center, Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, there's a lot of fights to pick at here. I'm going to start with a guy, yeah. and I'm going to come to you actually quite a lot here, Jamil. I'm going to start with a guy who seems to be really ticking all the boxes, not just because of his surname, but from what we've seen of him inside the ring, potentially the best of the of, of the sons, let's say. Emiliano Vargas, 6 and 0, 5 KOs, gets in with a with an undefeated fighter here, Alejandro Guardado, 5 and 0, just the 1 KO from Spain. Um, yeah, what are you making of Emiliano so far, Jamel? I like Emiliano. We actually um, sparred last year when I met him. Um, I, and I thought off the rip that he was probably one of the sharpest ones out of the three brothers. I mean, all three brothers are good are good fighters, but I think Emiliano definitely has the, um, you know, the highest ceiling. He's more he's more the one that has the, the, the um, amateur ba- background behind him. Um, he, he, he's, um, his father his father teaches him how to also be a switch hitter, so he wants to, like, he, he said he wants to learn how to fight fastball and orthodox, so again, this kid, this kid has a high ceiling, so I, I think he's going to do well in the future. All the best to Emiliano. Also on the card as well, Ruben Villa, 20-1, and one, um, super-duper skillful fighter, man. I remember him losing to Navarrete, obviously, you know, it was a very, very tough fight for him there, but he's come back since then, picked up a couple wins, both by knockout as well, and he's not really noted as a massive puncher, but both times he's managed to score stoppages. He, he gets in here with Brandon Valdez, 15-3 and three from Colombia, currently living in California. Um, we've seen him in with Robisi Ramirez, who's a real box of tricks. That was the only time he got stopped. Um... I, I really enjoy watching Via fight Jamel. Very, very skillful, like I say. I don't think his career has kind of gone to plan just yet, but I think there's a lot to still right. come from him. No, um, Ruben, Ruben's a um, hell of a fighter. I like Ruben as well. He's a good friend, um, very supportive. And I'm glad to see him back. You know, I know he's had, a, he's had a rough, you know, a rough outing, like you mentioned with Navarrete. But again, then again, like, Navarrete is not easy for anyone that he's been coming to he's coming across in the last few years. So again, it's good to see him, and I, and I believe that um, if I'm correct, Villa has has a win over Lopez, who's in the main event. 
Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, before we get to that main event, it's worth mentioning as well, Robson Concesau, another guy who's been quite unlucky. A lot of people felt he deserved that decision against Oscar Valdez. Um, obviously got completely outclassed against Shakur Stevenson. No real surprises. He gets in here, though, with Humberto Galindo, who is a little bit of a... I mean, he's limited, but he's a he's a dangerous guy. He can certainly punch. He put Raymond Muratala down last time. Uh, Muratala managed to get up off the canvas and finish the fight by stoppage in round nine, but he showed a glimpse there of that power that he certainly has. Like I say, he's limited, but if he lands on Concesau, it could be quite interesting. Um, yeah, Concesau, a good fighter again, Jamel, who, like I say, has been quite unlucky. Yeah, no, I'm with you, I'm with you. Um, yeah, Robson def definitely has had, like, you know, not the best of luck. But then again, um, you know, Tyron it is putting him, in, again, in great opportunities for him to get it back at the title. But, again, like you mentioned as well, he has to be careful because, uh, you know, Robson, you know, he, he can get hit at times because he doesn't have the best upper body movement, and at times, you know, he'll load up. So if you time him correctly, you may be able to catch him. But it should be a, it should be a good one, and... We see, we'll see where he goes from there. And forgive me for this one, because I'm going to be honest, I don't know too much about either guy here. I'm going to kind of throw it to you, actually, to save me. But um, should it? will it be a good fight? We've got Omar Alejandro Aguilar against Julio Luna Avila. Yeah, I think I think that, that should be a good one. I mean, I, I, I can understand why. Not much. You don't know much of them because they're, they're not big names out there. But again, they're, they're both they're both you know, you know really hard working fighters, solid fighters in my opinion. And I think that should be a good one that I'm top ranking added on the card. And like I mentioned earlier before, um, you know I think I believe on social media that that whole card is pretty much stacked from top to bottom. So it should be a, a, um, an entire entertaining ten night of boxing for fans out here. Absolutely. And also on the card, another really, really exciting prospect, Xander Zayas, 16-0, is for the NABF and WBO, NABO um, super welterweight titles. He gets in with another dangerous puncher, Roberto Valenzuela Jr., 21-4, 20 KOs though I remember seeing him put down Solomon Sissoko a few fights ago, I think that one was on the... Uh, Chocolatito Martinez on the card, I want to say, uh, is on the zone. Um, but yeah, dangerous puncher again. And um, yeah, these kind of these these kind of risks, man. It's 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 a it's a risk because I think Zayas is a really good fighter, like I say, but only 21 years of age. I don't think he's being rushed as such. But this is a a heavy step up, I think, for just a few fights in. No, it's a great step up, and again. The reason why we can't say being a rush because I believe Xander is actually now the youngest fighter to be signed with top rank. So he's actually been a pro for quite some time now. And, you know, one year he he was, what, faster than the year. Now, you know, now he's trying to become a, a, a legit contender. So, you know, you have to step these kids up to see what they able to see what they can do. But I believe that top rank has the best matchmakers in the world, if, if not if not the least two of them. And, um, you know, every, everything with them is for a reason. And there's a plan. There's a plan of execution behind everything with these guys. So I believe the time is right for um, Xander to really, you know, step up and, and, and go from prospect to contender. And then I believe it's going to be the chief support, but I could have the scheduling a little bit wrong here. But a man who you shared the ring with, went 10 rounds with, Jermaine Ortiz, 16-1 and one with a draw. He steps in with Antonio Moran, 29-5 and five with a draw. Very, very tough guy. We've seen him really in with some great fighters. Devin Haney, Jose Pedraza, Arnold Barboza Jr. and a few others. Um, yeah, Jermaine Ortiz... Jamel, I remember when the fight was made between the pair of you, and I couldn't understand why. I think at the time, a lot of people were expecting him to be victorious against you. I couldn't understand why. I didn't know much about him. Obviously, got in there with you, managed to win the fight. Um, since then, I think that Lomachenko fight, that really right. showed the world how good uh, how, exactly. how how good he is and that was a close fight a hard fight for Lomachenko we haven't seen him since then it's, it's almost been an entire year but he looked good despite losing and his stock went rocketing in that fight oh yeah um, honestly after that fight him and I actually started working together 
So I'm, I'm advising them um, along with my partner Jerry Casara as we're advising his career. I'll be there. To, I'll be there to obviously, to, um, you know, to support him this weekend and also do my job. But yeah, Jermaine. Jermaine's a good, he's a good kid. He's a good fighter. Um, very, very well um, respectful. Listen, listen to direction, and, and he's, he's just easy to work with. So I, I like. I have the pleasure of um, you know working with Jermaine, but. Um, I know. I know. After this fight, he was he was actually looking forward to being called for that Shakur Stevenson fight. And as we've seen today, you know, Shakur Stevenson finally has found an opponent. Thank God. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to Shakur. But um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great things that we want to do with with Jermaine, and it all starts this weekend. And then yeah, the main event: Luis Alberto Lopez defending his IBF World Featherweight title. He gets in with the very, very tough Joet Gonzalez, twenty-six and three. British fight fans um, are very familiar with Luis Alberto Lopez. A lot of people don't like him over here. He he seems to come over here and just keep beating guys from over here. Um, he burst on the scene at least over here when he when he actually knocked out Isaac Lowe, who's the cousin of Tyson Fury. Stopped him, uh, took his O, come back, beat uh, Josh Warrington in a really close fight, and then last time out stopped Michael Conlon. Um, yeah, you touched on his 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 loss a few fights back. It, it's, it's it's right back in 2019 now against Ruben Villa. Since then, he's he's just been in insane form most of the time getting the knockout but they don't come much tougher than Gonzalez like I say um no someone someone made a point the other day they said if this fight were to have took place three years ago uh Joe Gonzalez would probably be the massive favorite whereas right now yeah. he's the massive underdog and I think that kind of stopped me for a second that I thought you know what that is kind of true that's a that's a really interesting take and it's not, a, and the thing about it, it's not a knock against Joette. Joette, like you just pointed out, is still a hard, rugged, tough guy. I, and, and I and I said it when this fight was made. I said, man, Joette Gonzalez has never had an easy path to the world title. Let's just put that out there right now. But on the other hand, with Lopez, Lopez has gotten better since he's been since he's been more on the scene. I mean, I think the first time I came across Lopez was well, obviously the Via fight, but then he came back for the. The Andy Benson's fight and the Gabe and, the, and you know and the Gabe Flores fight, and even what I seen what he did to my my friend Nick Collins and the changes he made in that camp, I was like, yeah, this this guy is going to be a serious threat in the featherweight division because you know he's still he's still growing, willing to learn and he's developing. So you 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 got to praise that. Yeah, I I think it's going to be a really good fight. I've I've got a feeling we're going to see it go to distance. I just don't see. Lopez actually stopping Gonzalez because Gonzalez is so tough. But I think I think it's a really good fight. I wouldn't count Gonzalez out. He's a big underdog, man. But um, yeah, it should be a good one. I really think it will be. And like you said, I think that that card, pretty much from top to bottom, is absolutely stacked. Um, couple last cards to mention before we wrap it up. One fight card to mention uh, that also goes down on Friday. There seems to be a lot of fight cards going down on Friday. Uh, just one fight to mention over here in Richmond, Virginia, USA. I think it's going to be on Fight TV. Um, friend of the show, Dusty Hernandez Harrison. Um, Good to see him actually at light heavyweight at the moment because I remember at one point in time he was world ranked at welterweight. He was trying to fight Kel yeah. Brook, who was champion, and then he moved up to cruiserweight. He's still undefeated. I think he's had quite a tough time. I think he, his 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 father slash trainer I think was murdered maybe the back end of last year. He's had a really really rough time, and um, yeah, all the best to him. You know, prayers to him of course. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully he can come that. back with a win. Yeah. Yeah, I know Dusty. Me and Dusty um, came up through the rankings and things of that together. Um, I actually, I actually personally knew his father as well. So you know, again, my condolences to to him and his family. But I'm just glad to see that you know Dusty's still trying to you know live out his dream and actually get to get on that platform and get to that world title stage eventually. So so eventually, I hope I hope he finds his footing and, and gets the, the the fights that he needs. But again, it's good as always. It's good to hear that Dusty's back on the scene doing the thing. Yeah, and like I say, it was crazy how he'd gone from welterweight to cruiserweight, but good to see he's actually moved to light heavy. It's over six rounds. He gets in with, with uh, Ronald Montez, who's 19 and 18, with a draw. I think quite a big puncher. But all the best there to Dusty. And then, yeah, the final two cards to mention. This one goes down on Saturday on the zone at the Commerce 
Casino in California. Over here, two fights to mention. Um, a female fight at minimum weight. We're going to see Yucasta Val, 28 and 2, stepping in with Maria Santizo, 11 and 3. It's for the IBF and WBO World Minimum Weight titles. 10 two minute rounds. Um, I think there's a chance we're going to see the winner of this fight step in with Sinisa Estrada, Jamel. Am I right in saying that? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm going to just be honest because um, I know personally there's a lot of bad blood between how she left Golden Boy and, you know, from things that I heard through the grapevine that, you know, Oscar is not really trying to do her any favors because he feels if she won those fights, you know, she could have stayed over at Golden Boy, which is probably true. You know, but again, I, I I don't I would give it that I would give it a I would give it a thirty percent chance just from the things that I hear from the behind the scenes and working with and working with um you know camps close close to these individuals I I just know that for a fact that Oscar De La Hoya you know the demand that makes the last day is really not in the Sunisa side of business as as of, as of now I mean I, I've seen him going not as, as of last week I've, I've seen him and Sunisa butting heads on Instagram, I believe, where they, they weren't getting along. And Oscar, Val, I mean, how about this? Oscar De La Hoya pointed out, basically saying that he doesn't believe that um, Sinise can sell out, you know, can sell out an arena. So that was a jab that he made towards her. And and, and it was just kind of ugly. So I don't I don't, I don't, don't see it happen. I mean, I would like for it to happen, especially the boxing fans. I know we would all love to see it happen, but it just it's just a lot deeper than, you know, boxing at this point with, with Sinise and Golden Boy as a whole. Damn, okay, I didn't know all of that, but hopefully somehow the fight can get made. It would be for the undisputed title, because um, she's got the other two yeah. belts, of course, that these two... Just, had, I, do, I believe she just had surgery as of yesterday, too, on her yeah, hands. Yeah. Shot yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, you gotta, you gotta she was... Yeah, that plays out, too. Yeah, she was lying in hospital, and, uh, and and yeah, I saw that picture. She still looked unbelievable, which is kind of crazy, laying in hospital, but looking 10 out yeah. of 10, as always. Um, the main she's event... Always fight shape. She's always in fight shape. She's always in fight shape. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's always got a smile on her face as well, those pearly white yeah. teeth. We'll move on, though. We'll move on to the main event. William Zapeda. Um, a really, really exciting fighter. 28 and 0 currently. He steps in with Mercito Gesta, 34 and 3 with three draws. Gesta, who is probably in the prime of his life, coming off a really big upset win last time against Joseph Jojo Diaz. Um, Joseph Jojo Diaz was super duper disappointing that night there, but he's, he's you know his confidence is at an all time high. Um, William Zapeda was just knocking everyone out. And then he kind of went through a little phase where it slowed down. He had two back-to-back -back fights go to distance after putting together like 10, 11 KOs in a row. Um, he also beat Joseph Jojo Diaz unanimously, though. So, uh, yeah, um, he did get back to knockout ways last time out. A quick knockout in two rounds against Jaime Arbolada. Um But, yeah, should be a good fight, Jamel. And it's always good to see William Zapeda, who... Um, I think at one point they were trying to kind of line him up to fight Javante Tank Davis at some point. I can believe it. I can believe it. But, um, yeah, the beta is definitely, yeah. I mean, everything you pointed out when he was just knocking out everybody, I'm like, this this guy, this kid is dangerous. You know, of course, of course, you know, obviously sometimes he's from competition, not saying that his competition was dope, but like some guys, like like a guy like Jojo D, who's a rugged veteran, as we could say now, you know, you don't always get that way. But, again, he still just displayed – um a lot of beautiful boxing in that fight. So it wasn't just that, you know, you, you clearly see he's not just a, a knockout artist, but, you know, he's a fighter. Like, he like he has a, a high punch output volume. I mean, he, he can box. He can, he, can, he can fight on the inside. He can make it rugged. So he, he's a hard he's a hard, hard outing for anyone at this point. Um, shout out to uh, Masito Gesta as well. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, Gesta, he, as we know his whole career, he fights everybody you put, against, you put up in front of him. You know, this guy fought. He he's, he's got to win over Jojo Diaz as well. He fought guys like Jorge Linares. So again, it's a great matchup. Shout out to Golden Boy for, for for making that matchup. And then yeah, the final card to mention actually goes down 
on Monday in Japan, in Tokyo, at the Ariaki Arena. By the time the show goes out next week, this fight would have already taken place. So here we are previewing it. Just two fights to mention over here. Um, I'm going to really run through this one quite quickly. Kenshiro Taraji, 21-1. and one. He steps in with South Africa's Heki Budler, who is 35-4 and four these days in his 40th pro outing. Obviously over 12 rounds for the WBA Super and WBC World Light Flyweight titles. And another man, and I am going to come to you just briefly here, Jamel Junto Nakatani, 25-0, defending that WBO World Super Flyweight title. Um, last time out, obviously boxed on a top-ranked show at the MGM Grand Las Vegas. Got that sickening, sickening knockout against Andrew Maloney, friend of the show. It was horrible to see him go down that way. <laughs> But yeah, I tell you, I, what, I was there. I, I was there live in the, um, the venue yeah. that was on the um, the Haney Lomachenko card. And it's funny that you're bringing this up because I got I got to call that card as well <laughs> for oh. Tom Ring. So, oh, wow. yo, yeah, yo, 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 I'm I'm going back to back, and then and then Tuesday morning I'm gonna start my own training camp. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be, it's gonna be a busy upcoming weekend going into the week. But I'm all, I'm ready for it. And again, um, yeah, that that that, that guy is has frightening power. And on top of that. He can really, he knows how to control distance and space. Like, he has a great jab. And, you know, he's just patient, very patient. Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, that I couldn't believe the way he finished that fight. Obviously, he was winning the fight. And, um, you know, Andrew Maloney stuck in there, showed his toughness that's unquestionable, and carried on trying the entire time. And it was just so sad to see him go like that. Like I say, friend of the show, Andrew Maloney. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, really guy, nice good. guy, really nice guy, but yeah. Yeah, me and his brother, they're both good guys, good friends of mine. Love yeah, him to death. Man. Yeah, so yeah, Nakatani, like I say, steps in with RG Cortez, 25-3 and three with two draws. Uh, should be a good one, but I think the star of the show is Nakatani. It's just going to be good to see him get in there again. Uh, the, the, the interesting thing is Cortez hasn't been stopped, and he suffered a loss a couple fights back to Juan Fres, uh, Francisco Estrada, managed to obviously yeah. go the distance with him. And his two other losses came in just his third and fourth pro fights. One was a majority decision loss over four rounds. One was a disqualification. So he put together a heck of a run and lost to Estrada on points. So he's a very good fighter, I think, but Nakatani is the man to see. But anyway, that brings the preview part to a close. In part one, we did the review part. Then we welcomed our special guest. In part two, we did the news part. We've just wrapped up the preview part. The final thing for me to do in this part is just to say... Jamel, thanks once again for stepping in. Obviously, usually every week I do the show with Eddie Chambers. I gave him a week off last week. We had Archie Sharp do the show with me. Oh, man. Oh, man. Fast hands, Eddie Ch Yo, You know, it's crazy, man. And please, please send my send my uh, um, my love and appreciation to, to Archie Sharp. I've Even on the state side, I've been like, yo, where the hell is Archie? Where the hell is Archie? Because I, I truly believe, and I'm putting this out there, I truly believe, that he was looked over. He deserves. He deserves a world title shot. He's been. He's been at it since I was champion, and since then, you you probably seen that belt change hands at least two, two, three times now. So they need to give Archie Sharp his his, his um his, his shot. And, I, and I'm putting that out there for myself publicly. I mean, shout out to Archie Sharp. I know we had our back and forth at the time, but I'm, I'm still a gentleman in this gentleman sport. Give Archie Sharp his credit. Give him. Give him a shot. He he earned. He earned that that mandatory spot that was taken from him. The hard way by continue fighting, no politics. He could take. He kept fighting and climbing, and I believe that he deserves a shot. It doesn't have to be never right there, but he deserves a world title shot against one of these guys. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, Jamel, uh, we had Archie on last week do the show with me. I gave Eddie Chambers another week off this week uh, to do the show with, with with you, of course. And I just want to say thank you for filling in, man. It's obviously fantastic to get you back on. It's been two years. It's been far too long. And it's just it's been long, a real pleasure, bro. man. It's been a real pleasure it's having long. you back on, Jamel. Thank you, bro. It's always good talking to you. And listen, let, let, let's stay in contact a lot more from here on out. <laughs> Absolutely, Jamel. And like I say, when you've got your fight penciled in, we'll definitely get you back on for a proper interview. But like I say, thanks for taking part in this week's show. The final thing for me to do is to come in with the outro, which I'll do in just a few seconds. Okay, and this wraps up episode 413 of the Box Hard Podcast. I've been your host, Joey Coastman. 
Jamel Herring has been with me for the duration of the show, the former WBO Super Featherweight World Champion. Always great to be in contact with him again. Always great to have him back on the show. I've certainly missed him. The biggest thanks of all, though, goes out to you, the listeners. Like always, thanks once again for tuning in. That's about everything from myself, though. Enjoy your weekends, people. Stay safe, and we shall see you all again next week.